All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Racha Kudash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah being the name of the only begotten Son, all right, the Racha Kudash being the Holy Spirit, all in the Paleo Hebrew tongue, the Lashawan Kudash, all right. I, of course, double unto the elders and apostles of great millstone. Greetings and citations to you, Akim, which are you brothers, to the pushing the word, the testimony, in both truth and sincerity. This is Jacob out of great millstone, the with the lesson of exhortation and edification to the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh. I want to discuss uh, the, um, the fact that the servants of the Lord in you know, fact, the spirit I'm gonna have to grab another scripture before I even started off of Isaiah. Let me get that in Psalms real quick. If I can recall what scripture that was, I believe it's Psalms. Um, what is it? Um, no, it has Proverbs. Proverbs chapter ten. I'm gonna start it off with Proverbs chapter ten. All right, this is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 3. It says, The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish. All right. All right, and that term famish and suffer, essentially, when you go into the Hebrew, uh, it's the same word. All right, it's, it's one word there, um, which um, means to hunger, to starve. All right. The Lord will not suffer his servants, all right, the people who love him and, and follow and are obedient to his word, his testimony. He will not suffer us to famish, all right. It says, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked, all right. And in the Hebrew, that term substance, if I'm not mistaken, is, uh, is hawath. In this context, which means desire, all right, and um, and so that's going into the enterprise of the of the of the wicked. But the point I'm trying to bring forth is um, the Lord He's not going to He's not going to allow us if we've been serving Him and doing His will, we are going to be satiated, um, in the time of Jacob's trouble. First and foremost, all right, of course, we're going to have to undergo certain situations of trials, tribulations. Um, but at the end of the day, the Lord is going to protect us and he's going to take us, take care of us. He will not let the righteous um, die of famine. You know, he's not going to let. He's not going to allow us to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles. You know, he's going to deliver us from those plagues. All right. Is it, that's actually, um, I believe, Psalms, the 91st chapter. And then the plague shall draw nigh unto thee. I'll briefly paraphrase. But, you know, we, you must have confidence and faith in, that the Lord is going to protect you and deliver you from what it's, you know, we've all been through, you know, some, we've all been through tribulation in uncomfortable situations, but nothing to the magnitude of Jacob's trouble that we're going to have to deal with, you know, but even, in, you know, in what's going to be taking place on the earth, may I say, but even in those situations, the Lord is going to sustain us, all right, if we believe in him. All right, so let's go back to Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 65, verse 13. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. All right? And who is the, who's going to be hungry? The wicked. All right? If you follow in Islam, if you're saying you don't have to worship Yahweh Shah, you know, if you're saying, um, if you follow in any, any of these different worldly beliefs, you're going to be hungry. You're not going to be protected. You're not going to be delivered. All right? it's, it's only going to be the elect of the nation of Israel that's going to be delivered. All right. So in the reads, it says, it says, behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, 
but ye shall be ashamed. Right, and why are we going to rejoice? Lord willing, I'm of that number. We're of that number. And why are we rejoicing now? <laughs> because we see that the Lord has opened us. Op we, we see that the Lord is having compassion upon us even now and even um, to the end B through our faith, all right? Because faith is the what? The evidence of the thing un unseen and all that is hoped for. So through our faith, all right, we are glad that the Lord is going to strengthen us and is strengthening, and is strengthening us as we speak. You know, but those who are going to be ashamed of the wicked, the people who didn't take counsel, you know, didn't adhere to the commandments and did as they pleased. You know, the scripture says, um, he that cometh in another way and not through the door is a, is a thief and a robber, man. Right? These people weren't grounded. They didn't come up the right way. And ultimately, because of that, in due season, they're going to be ashamed. All right. Um, verse 14 says, Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. All right. All right. And, and that's what's going to take place in America. All right. Of course, in the kingdom for the wicked, you know, so on and so forth. But also in these last days of America. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. Also, in these last days of America, let's go to um, let's go to Isaiah the fifty-eight. Uh, like you, yeah. Isaiah fifty-eight. This is Isaiah chapter fifty-eight, verse ten. It says, "And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted, which is what being a brother, man, keeping the commandments by what loving your brother as you love yourself." Right, and how do you satisfy the soul of the afflicted by feeding them this truth? Now, also, according to wisdom, you know, you make sure your brothers, you know, you make sure the brotherhood eats. Because we know that the scripture says, who is my mother? And who is my brother? And he pointed to the disciples showing that the true family is those men in the truth. Now, of course, you can have mercy, and compassion on, um, you know, Israelites who are not in the truth or even heathens, you can have mercy upon. But, you know, the true family is the elect, first and foremost, you know? All right? It says, um, hmm, it says, excuse me, um, it says, Then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday, which meaning we're going to have understanding. All right, so in, in be uh, have a, a shine to our our livelihood. All right, verse eleven it says, "And Yahweh shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou should be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not." And that's going into what the wisdom, knowledge, understanding of this truth, pursuing the what John the fourth chapter, and the fourteenth verse, Yahweh shall speaking at the well, well, uh, it said, it said, you know, essentially spring up to everlasting righteousness, everlasting life. The water, because the water represented the, um, the, uh, essentially um, the truth, you know. All right, so. Um, I actually want to get a precept for that. Let's go because I wanted to emphasize, uh, you know, the value of brotherhood, all right, and the value of charity, all right? Because these are very important, pivotal, um, pivotal pillars that we must utilize and exercise in these last days if we want to um, be uh, delivered. All right, delivered from America. All right, so let's go to First Peter's. All right, this is the success. This is the successor of our Lord and Savior. All right, Peter is. All right, so um, this is First Peter's chapter three. Excuse me. Let's go to chapter four. First Peter's chapter four. 
in verse 8. The reason says, And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. All right? Charity should cover the multitude of sins. Okay? Charity. And when you go into that term, of course, we're going to do it. Let's go into that term. Not giving people... I mean, it can apply to giving people money. You know. Uh, but what? where is your intent in giving somebody that money? You see, it's deeper than just doing the law or... You know, doing certain acts is your intent behind the act holds weight as well. That's why when you have, when you're dealing with Yahweh Shah in the certain in the, in the situation with the Pharisees, they brought up the adulterous woman to Yahweh Shah this, um, to see if he would you know his judgment that he would um, profess upon her. What did he do? He said, "He that is without sin cast the first stone," because these they, and the scripture says that they were trying to tempt him. They weren't doing it because they loved the law of Moses, or they loved the Lord. They were doing it to persecute and try to put the death of Yahweh shot. You know, so your intent is very important in your actions, I and mean, ultimately the fruit that should that should be bare. All right. So let's get into it. It says, First Peter chapter four, verse eight. It says, "And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves." Up, uh, what does it say? Among yourselves. Mm. Mm. It says, "For yourselves shall cover the multitudes of sins." All right, charity shall cover the multitude of sins. All right. Oh, yeah, Shalakia. I wanted to get that term, charity, which is agape, which is affection, goodwill, goodwill. So the will of behind you, your decision-making is good. Love, benevolence, brotherly love. All right, so that's what charity is going into. All right, let's, um, I'm about to wrap this thing up. Let's go to the book of Sirach. All right, it's the book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 6. It says, Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. And that's very important. Very important to trust in Yahweh by Shemiah It says, Ye that fear Yahweh, wait for his mercy. All right, and we see inkling of his mercy being shown to us now. All right. Um, it says, and go not aside lest ye fall. Right. So if you try to take things into your own hand and you're not doing the will of the Heavenly Father, you're going to fail, man. All right. All right. And you said some... Verse 8, it says, Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. All right? So if you believe in the Lord, your reward is not going to fail, man. It's going to be manifest. All right? So I'm going to finish it off with this. This is Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19. It says, Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, which is speaking of the Israelites, and I will get them praise and fame in every land whether they have been put to shame, which is beautiful. Lord, our Redeemer is redeeming us as we speak, all right, Incre uh, with increments, you know, through certain things that's taking place and transpiring on the earth. It's a part of the Lord's redemption. And now his ultimate act and move is when he returns to the, you know, when the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh, when Yahweh returns with the chariots to destroy this place of America and to deliver the elect. And Lord willing, we'll be of that number. All right, verse 20 it says, At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I will gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn your captivity before your eyes, says Yahweh. Right. So the Lord is going to give us glory in a beautiful name. Why? 
because we are his people and we are his representatives on earth. That's why the high priests and, you know, and the Levites in their different office, they were decked so finely, you know, because they were what? Their intercessor. They were the representative, you know, of the Lord. And that's how the men of the Lord, right, of all tribes are going to be in the kingdom, just on an even higher level. All right. So Lord, when this lesson was edifying, giving all praise unto Yahweh, Shemiah, Shalom.